Good morning to the student body of Bosco Tech and to any parents, family, friends, faculty, and staff who are watching this broadcast. Here we go. I hope that you had a great summer and that you're looking forward to learning again. Our teachers are excited to meet you, especially our new freshmen. This has been a busy, challenging, exciting, and wonderful summer break, which we spent preparing to welcome all of our students back to our school and to our classrooms, even if those places are temporarily online. You selected Bosco Tech as your school for a reason, because of the fully accredited academic program and the uniquely scaffolded technology programs. We intend to continue to deliver that education online. And we're gonna show you that distance doesn't matter. If you're ready to learn, if you're ready to work, if you're ready to show your talents, Bosco Tech is ready to guide you on the path that will culminate in your acceptance at the university of your choice. Let's do this. Let's do this together. As this is the first day of school, let us begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Now you have Mr. Chula. It's, oh, sorry. All right. From home, gentlemen, I ask you to please place your hand over your heart. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. Every school year, we begin with a liturgy event. And this year, it's gonna be a little bit different, of course, but we will still begin the year in prayer together. So for that, I'm gonna be calling on the school's youth ministry team to guide us through a series of prayers that's gonna get our school year started on the right path. At this time, I'm gonna call on Jericho Santiago, who I'm pretty sure is a senior this year. Sorry, Jericho. I'm gonna call on you to go ahead and take it over. Jericho? As a Bosco Tech community, we would like to give a warm welcome to our freshman class of 2024. After completing their first freshman retreat last Friday, today marks their first assembly. Even though circumstances have prevented all of us from coming together, we want to recognize and welcome each and every one of them to our Bosco Tech family. And once again, I would like to say welcome to the freshman class. I'd like to pass it on to Carlos Campa, who will be starting us off with our opening prayer. Sorry about that, guys. Give me one second. Good morning and welcome to our opening day prayer service. Even with these unorthodox conditions, we are here today as one Salesian community to ask God for his blessing. Hope moves us. Is the 2021 Strena of the Salesians of Don Bosco. It is their response to the problems created by the pandemic. This theme will be used by all Salesians throughout the world for the entire year. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, as we begin our 2020-2021 school year, we thank you for allowing us to gather once again as the Bosco community. Even during these trying times, which are leaving many scared and anxious, help us remain as a strong and supporting symbol Bosco Tech has always been. 
Faced with this harsh and painful reality, with its heavy consequences, send us your spirit to make all things new. Lord, show us no matter how dire the situation looks now, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Guide the faculty, staff, and students, and support us with your everlasting love. We pray that you help us keep the image of hope in our hearts as we step towards a new school year and await the day we are all back on campus together. We ask all this through Christ, your Son. Amen. Let us listen to God's word, read by Jericho Santiago. A reading from the book of Revelations. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and first earth had passed away, and there is no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself we will be with them. And be their God, he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, or mourning, or crying, or pain for the old order of things has passed away. He who, who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hi, I'll be doing the responsorial song. Our response is, Lord God, be our hope. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for it is he who delivers you from the snare of the trapper and for, from the deadly pestilence. Lord God, be our hope. You will not be afraid of the terror by night or of the arrow that flies by day, of the pestilence that stalks in darkness or of the destruction that lays waste at noon. Lord God, be our hope. For you have made the Lord my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil will befall you, nor will any plague come near your tent. Lord God, be our hope. For he will give his angels charge concerning you, to guard you in all your ways. They will bear you up in their hands, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Lord God, be our hope. Because he has loved me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him securely on high, because he has known my name. He will call upon me, and I will answer him. Lord God, be our hope. Uh, I'm Mr. Stoltz. I'm an assistant youth minister, and I'm going to read the announce the uh, gospel according to Saint Mark. And he was teaching them many things and parables, and he was saying to them in his teaching, "Listen to this. Behold, the sower went out to sow." And it came about that as he was sowing, some seed fell beside the road, and the birds came and ate it up. And other seed fell on the rocky ground, where it did not have much soil. And immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of soil. And after the sun had risen, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it withered it away. 
and other soil fell among the thorns, and the thorns came up and choked it, and it yielded no crop. And other seeds fell into the good soil, and as they grew up and increased, they yield a crop and produce 30, 60, and a hundredfold. And he was saying, he who has ears to hear, let him hear the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Our harmony today will be given by uh, Youth Ministry Director, Mr. H. Mr. H. Good morning, everyone. How are you? It's good to be with you. On behalf of the Salesian community, the faculty, the staff, I'd like to welcome you all back. I just want to share just a couple of words on our, our gospel and a little bit about how we're going to maintain ourselves as an oratory. In putting together our service, we thought long and hard about that gospel message. It's a story of struggle, of perseverance, of moving forward in our lives. Certainly, since March, we've all been tested somehow. The virus has spared no one. It's just a matter of degrees, how much it has affected our lives. But we, as Salesians, as Bosco Tech community, those seeds have fallen on good soil. And we've taken the time to nurture it, to water it, to prune it, and it's growing. What's my evidence for this? We're here right now. We've made it. But we have a long way to go. And we need to make sure we take care of each other. We nurture each other. We support each other. What we're going to be doing in the next few weeks it's going to be crucial that we support, love, engage one another. Nobody gets left behind. No one. We've worked very diligently the last, this last week as a faculty, understanding our role in our online Bosco community. We're here for you in every sense of that word, as Salesian educators, we're here for you. But it's not enough. You need to be there for each other. Let's create this online Bosco Tech oratory, all of us. We tried some uh, online gaming way back in, in May with the help of some of our, our, our faculty, uh, Mr. Chua, Mr. Calve, Mr. Yu. Uh, it was amazing stuff. We tried something new. We did the playground. We've done a retreat for our freshmen. We've done the church. We're going to embark on the school component of the oratory. Today, this is home. This is a place where we can be nurtured and loved, even though we're online. Take that story of that mustard seed that was planted and let it grow. Don't let the negativity overtake you, although sometimes it's tempting, I know, but don't let it. We're better than that, we're greater than that. And with Mr. Kreiner's leadership and the administration and the staff and the faculty, 
We will be there for you. But again, I ask that you be there for each other. If I could ask Angel to start our petitions. God bless you, Bosco Tech. Thank you, Mr. H. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we pray for clerical leaders all over the world that they may continue to live, spread, and teach the word of God during these trying times and that they keep their community safe. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, help all world leaders. Grant them the gifts of leadership, compassion, and the conscience to preserve their families, nations, and neighbors. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Father Chin, Father Mel, and the Bosco community that they stay safe and healthy during this troubling time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that everyone that is affected by this pandemic so that we may get through it while maintaining our hope in God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that you lend your strength to all those who are there for us in times of crisis, fear, and hurt, and to give courage to the first responders who continue to do this important work they are called to do, to also protect those who are part of our Bosco Tech family. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for you, God, to watch over and protect our nation's military members and their families. Sustain them with your everlasting arms as they serve around the world we ask that you guard their families and loved ones back home, especially Don Bosco Tech and Nama. We pray to the Lord. We pray for any other intentions we may hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. If I could ask you all to bow your heads, take a moment and let me end our prayer service with a blessing for all of us. Loving God, in your son, you've given us the one and only teacher of life and wisdom. Grant that your word may inspire in our hearts an ardent love for the truth. Lead us to recognize your fatherly presence in this world that you have created and in this history of your saving grace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. St. John Bosco, pray for us. And Mary, help of all Christians, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. I'd like to uh, send the screen over to uh, Mr. Memo Gutierrez. Thank you, Mr. Herrera. Uh, I hope everybody can see me. Uh, I wanna welcome you to today's uh, orientation, first day of school. Uh, good morning, and on behalf of the Bosco Tech Administration, the Salesians, our faculty and staff, and our board of trustees. I welcome you and all your families to the 2021 school year. A special welcome to all our freshman students and any new transfer students. Uh, welcome and, jo uh, you know, welcome to the Bosco Tech family. Uh, I want to thank uh, everybody that helped put today together. Um, I also want to thank our student leaders who are participating in this morning's uh, prayer service. Today is an important day as it starts the journey for the 2021 school year. And it brings me great joy to be reunited with you and the tech community. Um, as a follow-up to our prayer service, one of the messages that I wanna reinforce is that Bosco Tech is a great 
educational experience. We know that we have a unique uh, learning and um, experiences that we provide for you uh, through our technology and through the programs that we offer. But a lot of schools um, are going to be challenged with going beyond that. And that is how do we maintain the oratory while we're providing uh, our educational program? And so one of our goals for the year is to accompany you in the best way possible. Uh, that could be virtual and that could be in person. Uh, accompaniment is important in the Salesian educational methodology and accompaniment in Italian, acompañamiento, similar to Spanish. It reinforces the need of learning together, not only just learning, you know, subject matter together, but experiencing life together. And what we're experiencing right now, unfortunately, we have to experience it together. So learning, we know, is much better when we do it together as a family, and that's what we plan on doing and creating that best experience for you this year. Don Bosco, back in the early 1800s, committed his life to young people who were alone, who did not have any guidance, that had to experience life and its challenges. And he provided guidance, he provided hope, and he provided love. And as Salesian educators, we are dedicated to serving this mission. Today, we've already experienced a prayer service as a family. Uh, you're gonna have an opportunity to meet more faculty and staff. Uh, you're gonna have a chance to do a breakout with your classmates and in the afternoon, get to meet new teachers and classmates. I wish you all the best this year. And I pray that you and your family stay safe and healthy. And I cannot wait to see you on campus as soon as possible. So we will do everything we can to get you back on campus in a very safe way. So thank you very much. Uh, have a great year. And at this time, I will be handing it over back to Mr. Krynan. Thank you very much. God bless. Mr. Gutierrez, thank you very much. Um, on the screen right now, you're going to see the schedule for today. And so the first part of the schedule um, was the prayer service. And for the next period of time, we'll be going through what I call the general orientation. There's a lot of different things that we should talk about before we start our online learning. Part two today, which will start around 11 o'clock, maybe a little bit earlier. Okay, it all depends upon how long I talk for, and I apologize for that. Um, those will be breakout meetings by grade level. And in about a half an hour in your email boxes, the access codes for those breakout sessions will appear. And then, as Mr. Gutierrez was just mentioning, this afternoon we will do the walk through the classrooms. More on that in a few minutes. Um, before I go any further, I missed a slide that I wanted to show here. There we go. I want to mention our freshmen one more time. First of all, Youth Ministry, thank you so much for acknowledging them, uh, recognizing them, and for giving a quick shout out to them. I want to do the same again. Gentlemen, welcome to Bosco Tech. Every single one of you is going to play an important role here. And it's going to be the talents, your attributes, your characteristics that you bring to this school that's going to make our next generation of Bosco Tech students special. So I want to thank your parents for entrusting you to us. I want to thank you for being ready today to get started in a positive way. And I simply want to welcome you to Bosco Tech. All right, let's jump ahead there. So it has been a busy spring and summer. It really seems that ever since March 13th, which is when pretty much every school in Southern California switched over to distance learning, that we've been running nonstop. It's really been, uh, it's been exciting and occasionally a little bit tiring there. One of the things that we got into in the spring, the teachers over in IDEA got some of the students an idea, or it may have been the other way around, the students got us started. They wanted to do something 
to help those individuals who are on the front line in the medical centers during the time of this pandemic. And the one way that they saw that they could contribute was with face shields. We were already hearing about how they couldn't get enough of them. They weren't being provided fast enough. Where are these face shields? And so several students got together, put their brains in there. I know that uh, this is one of our graduates from last year, Alejandro Pena, uh, did quite a bit of the design work on that. Another one of our graduated seniors, um, Maverick Henry, uh, was out there machining these things. He was did a terrific job of the CNC machines. There were several others, and, and, and I, I, I apologize if I missed any one of them, especially if any of them happen to be uh, undergraduates who are still with us right now. But they did a terrific job. Uh, uh, Brother Tom there is in front of one of the piles of masks that they produce. Altogether, they produce like a, over a thousand of these things. Um, Mr., uh, Mr. Garza is standing, it's his sister, but she's actually one of the doc doctors over at one of the Kaiser hospitals. And he was delivering a number of these to her. Um, it was a terrific way that our students got involved to give back to the community. I was very, very proud of them for that there. Um, graduation was a challenge. Schools everywhere had to cancel their in-person graduation because it simply wasn't safe to do so. And unfortunately, we had to do the same almost. We were able to step it up a little bit. Well, I'm proud of what we were able to accomplish there. Now, you can never celebrate graduation enough. For the class of 2020, they lost a lot. And we wanted to find different ways that we could try to give some of that back to them again. One of the ways was as we published a, um, a little video log of pictures of all the graduates in their, their nice tuxedos and such. Um, and we published that way back in, I think it was in April. Uh, we had a virtual awards assembly for our seniors. Um, that's the image of the Spanish club being recognized there. We put together yard signs that we sent out. And no, none of this was at any cost to our families. We needed to celebrate them, not charge them. And we sent out these yard signs, which were hand delivered by faculty and staff to the kids um, that were put out in front, you know, at their houses. Um, we sent down the pictures of our graduates to several places, but uh, I know that NBC4 picked up on it and did the, the documentary of, of all their pictures and recognizing them, which was kind of cool. Uh, it's still up, by the way, if you want to check on the NBC4 website. We had a pickup from the awards assembly. Students came in and pick up their awards, their actual physical awards, and also picked up their gowns. And we had a great little celebration. That's Mr. Plantius breaking pretty much every rule of social distancing there is, but he just celebrated them. It was, it was truly a heartwarming afternoon um, as we were having the kids pick up all their stuff. And that was just terrific. And then it got to graduation. So we took this gym and we completely reconverted it there. And we set up a safe route for kids to be able to walk through and such. We, we didn't want to let our seniors go without a walking over the stage graduation. So we didn't have them collect together as a group to listen to the speeches and everything. We recorded those separately. Instead, we brought them in in small groups, one at a time, separated by about 50, 60 feet, slowly being processed in. But every single senior got a chance to walk across the stage to receive their diploma. And they had the diploma delivered to them, not by a human, because that could be a little concerning. We had Diploma Bot, that great looking uh, uh, blue robot. Uh, the guys over in IDEA and some students out of CSEE took our regular competition robot from the, oh boy, Mr. Garza, if I get it wrong, I think it was the FRC. Uh, they took the regular robot and modified, completely redid the top of it there so that it could deliver to the students their uh, diploma. And it was just an absolutely uh, fantastic event. We all had a great time with it. And then we stitched that all together into the final uh, graduation video there. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't think the sound is going through in this year. And that's fine, Mr. Chua. Um, but this is the last part of the video where, you know, we're turning the tassel and everything. Before this, we had pictures of every kid going across the stage, pictures of them when they were younger. It was, it was really a lot of fun. But we recorded this here as just the final celebration. There's some great music going in this here. You don't hear it, but you can check this up online. It's still up there, okay? And then they finished on off there. Please ignore the fact that the principal wasn't wearing long pants that day. And they got to be able to celebrate in some small way their graduation. Not exactly what we would have all preferred, but we got to engage with the kids directly and enjoy that day with them there. So. Yeah, we kept ourselves really, really busy there. And then summer came on, so we got to rest right now, right? 
not a chance. Our summer scholars program absolutely blew me away. I did not expect this. The admissions team did a great job of putting together the right teachers to create a program where we had almost as many summer scholars involved in this program this year that we've had in any year previous. And many of you went through our summer scholars program. Now this was an entirely online program. Uh, several of the teachers involved, I see Mr. Shockey, I see Mr. Chu, I see Ms. Nina, um, are all you know, they're handing out uh, materials. Other times they're handing out the final uh, diplomas and such. And the kids got to have a great online uh, event. In the picture in the upper right, you can actually see Mr. Chua on the screen there and guiding the students as they're working on their projects. Between last spring and the summer, we learned a lot about online education and how we can make it interactive. And I was really proud of what a great job the Summer Scholars people did uh, credit to Mr. Uh, Garcia from admissions, to uh, uh, Mr. Alberto Tom from admissions. They all, along with the teachers, knocked themselves out to do a great event. Other things that went on during the summer, our summer internship program. Despite the fact that the students couldn't go to the, to the various uh, companies and uh, corporations for the internship, they still had the program. They did it virtually. They worked with, with individuals at that company to learn about their jobs, to help out in some small way at the work, to learn something about the careers that they're considering when they leave Bosco Tech. And uh, I can't remember all the companies, but I know that, um, that uh, JMD Engineering participated. I know that our friends at Boeing participated again. There's several others that I'm forgetting and I apologize for it, but the summer internship program, even in an era of COVID-19, went on successfully. And the last thing we finished off this summer, and I don't have pictures of this either, I'm afraid. Uh, this is a retreat center up in, in um, uh, Wrightwood. Sorry, took me a moment there. Um, where they, they were trying to build up a play area for the kids. They needed some volunteers. So several of our students um, out of ACE, out of, I believe, IDEA, and if I missed any other texts, I feel MAT, MSET. Sorry, MSET. <laughs> Mr. Chu is up, keeping me honest here. Uh, Went on up there, a uh, small group went up there. They did social distancing the whole time. When one was working here, the other one was working there. And they put together a playground up at that um, uh, location there. Um, now, I know that Mr. Chua knows his answers because he was one of the moderators along with Brother Tom who went up there to keep an eye on the kids and to guide them. And for that, I want to say thank you, Brother Tom. Thank you, Mr. Chua, for going over and beyond. And thank you to the, to the Bosco Tech students who participated. It was a great event. All right, let's introduce some of our instructors. Now, the first thing I want to introduce, these are not new instructors. These are temporary or part-time instructors who are now returning to us full-time this year. So Mr. Calvea is going to be back with us again, Mr. Cruz. Now, Mr. Cruz was doing just the fine arts. He's now going to be doing fine arts and media arts. Uh, Mr. Dandaran is taking on uh, a much larger role down in ACE. And Mr. Rodriguez is returning to continue with the biological sciences. And he's basically turning o taking over uh, any class with the word biology in it, he'll be the one teaching it there. We have a couple of new people here at the school. Uh, Vincent Nolasco, who is a graduate from uh, construction technology in 09, that's our predecessor to ACE, um, is returning to the campus as our athletic director. We're very pleased to have him on board. Uh, I know I sent out his, his uh, bio uh, about a month ago or so there, but we're thrilled to have you on board with us here. He'll be speaking to you a little bit later in this broadcast. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Jennifer Regalado Ibarra is joining with us. Welcome. And she's going to be in the mathematics department. Uh, for those students who paid attention to this, she's taking over pretty much all of Mr. Chang's classes. And we're thrilled to have you on board there. Uh, good luck, gentlemen. You got a lot of work ahead of you there. And then finally, this is not a new teacher, not really, but um, Ms. Nina Luna is returning to us. And we're thrilled to have you on back there. Uh, Ms. Luna is going to be taking over the helm of the BMAP program, and she's also going to be teaching the anatomy and physiology courses for us. So to all three of you, uh, welcome on board or welcome back, and uh, good luck with the school year. There's also one more change to our Bosco Tech family. Um, Mrs. Dubashi, who has been away from here since um, March 13th, like the rest of us, uh, we did not know at the time, but uh, she and her husband wanted to start a family, and they were in the process of already doing so. And um, well, I got notified, I don't know, sometime around April that this was, uh, that, that she was expecting a child. Anyways, let me cut to the chase there. Last week, we we're very pleased to say that uh, her son arrived 
and uh, there's an addition to her family and definitely to the entire Bosco Tech family. And we just want to give our congratulations to Mr. and Mrs. Dabashi and best wishes. Now that's why Mrs. Dabashi won't be here this semester. And we're going to be subbing in with uh, some chemistry teachers until she returns uh, for the second semester. Okay. Cue picture. All right. <clears throat> So the schedules for today and for the next couple of weeks at school. Let's go over this for a moment. Um, if you know where your paper was, I had emailed these to you over the weekend. Okay. Uh, mine's printed on both sides there. Uh, if it's not in color, it's all right. It'll still work. If you got it off of the website, it's the exact same schedule, uh, but it has more of a black and gold look to it because, well, everything at Bosco Tech has to be black and gold. Uh, but if you can have that schedule out, please. So the schedule for the morning, it's going to be a, you know several people, mostly me, but several people talking and giving you important information. Uh, I do encourage students from this point forward, be ready to take a few notes on things that, hey, I don't want to forget about that. It's going to be important. Whether I'm talking or later on some of the other speakers, please be, uh, be uh, paying attention to it there. After the morning session is done, we'll take a break from about 12 to about 1 o'clock. And then from 1 to 3 o'clock, you'll be going through all of your classes in order from A1 to A4 and then B1 to B4, according to the schedule you see. The intention is just for a 10 minute class period. It's enough to check in, teacher to take role, say hi, maybe mention something about the book that you were supposed to buy, maybe mention something about uh, what would be useful to have with you as the class sessions meet, things like that. And then there's a five minute passing. I put quotes on that because the passing period is really just so you can then you know, exit that um, video conference and then go to your Google Classroom, find the next video conference, open it up and jump into place there and be ready to go by the next time period there. So we wanna do that quickly and you wanna to get to your next classes earlier than later, okay? So you have this on your paper, okay? It's on the very bottom. This is on the one that says week one only under Monday, uh, August 17th. And you'll see the schedule at the bottom. Have that with you for the rest of the day. It'll be helpful. Now, our bell schedule on a typical day is what I wanna go over now. Now, these are the two papers that I sent home to you, and I hope that you print it out. You really should. You could have it digitally, but it'd be nice to keep this around here as we're getting used to. Where am I supposed to be and when and what time? Um, things like that would be really, really helpful to it. So hopefully you have those out. So the first paper on this here is the one that had today's schedule and the schedule for this week, because it's a little bit different than next week. But what you're gonna see on this schedule is that every day is divided up. into various lessons and support sessions, okay? So I'm gonna look at an A day for this slide. This will be the schedule you're following tomorrow. At eight o'clock, classes start. You need to be in the class before eight o'clock. We'll talk about attendance more in just a moment there, okay? In the class, logged in, video camera and microphone ready to go. Teacher may ask you to mute, but I know that for attendance, you're gonna need those there. So that starts at 8 o'clock, goes to 8.55, and then there is a 15-minute what's called a support period. If the teacher needs to finish a point, they're going to use a little bit of that time. If a student's got a question, it's like, oh, my goodness, can I just ask you right now before I have to go to my next class and I forget about it? That's what it's there for. So you can ask those questions immediately and not wait for some help session later on. This is a chance to get the questions answered quicker so that you can work more independently, more effectively. Now, if you need more help with that there, after school, if you follow on down, so um, you can see I broke this up. Period A1 has a lesson and support. You see A2, lesson and support, keep on going. Lunch will be approximately from 11.40 to 12.30. That's 50 minutes, 5-0. And that, that actually seems like a lot of time. But I want to realize that some of you may be making your own lunch, okay? Put your, together your own you know, PB&Js and things like that. And you're gonna need some time to do that, okay? Get a little bit of break to rest, clear your head out there, get everything off your phone, put it aside, and you go back for your last period at 12.30. So when that is over, the lesson and the support period, then we go to help sessions for the next hour and 15 minutes. Every single class day, except for special Wednesdays. We'll come back on that one. For right now, go to whichever class you want to. Teachers are simply going to open up their meeting room and they'll be there. If you don't show up, that's okay. They've got grading to do, classes to prepare. They've got lots of work to do, but they're available. If you go to the room and they're not there, email them right away and they'll pop open the, the chat room for you, the, the, the video room for you to meet in there, okay? 
but that's every single day after school, you decide where your time is best placed. If there's a subject you're starting this year that you had difficulty with last year, start there, okay? But be thoughtful and intentional about getting help in real time when you need it, okay? All right, if you take a look at the second page of the schedules that I sent to you, and the second page at the top, it says week two and beyond, okay? This is our typical weekly daily class schedule. You'll see that Monday's an A day, Tuesday's a B day, Thursday's an A day, Friday's a B day, but Wednesday came up in a slightly different color to that there, a little bit different, okay? Wednesday is our special day, okay? I'm calling them special Wednesdays. I'm not sure why, especially because they won't always be on Wednesday. But this is a chance for us to get in that one extra class period. Gentlemen, uh, at least everybody but the freshmen, you've always had class schedules with us where every single week you would meet in your academic classes two or three times every week. We're bringing that back again. You're going to meet two to three times live with a, a session with the teacher. And that's Wednesday is that extra day that we need. So the first week, it's going to be an A day. The second week is going to be a B day. And that'll flip flop. So you're going to have to look carefully. Listen to your teachers. The calendar, I'm afraid right now, just says A, a slash or B, depending on what it is. So you may have to count. Now, by the way, I'm hoping that we get to trash this whole schedule as soon as possible and get you guys all back here on the campus where it's much easier to do all of this. But in the meantime, this will be helpful to us so that we can get you the instruction and the assistance that you need. Now, Wednesday afternoons are mostly meant for faculty meetings. So Wednesdays are not a great time to get help from a teacher. Now, if you email them and they're free, they'll email back to you, they'll help you out there. I'm not saying you can't communicate with them, but they will be tied up with their meetings also. And we've set that for the Wednesdays, except for when it's not on a Wednesday, okay? So this week we don't have that because today was our odd day. So for the rest of this week, it's A, B, A, B for the four days. Next week we will do the schedule Monday, Tuesday, A, B, Thursday, Friday, A, B, special Wednesday. The week after the, that, though, is Tritum week. Tritum is the ceremonial start of the school year at a Salesian school. Tritum kind of means three days, uh, opening, celebration, start. I'm sure Brother John will correct me on that exactly there, but uh, uh, that's our, our traditional celebrational start. And we wanted to have that day on Friday. So on that week, if you look on the school's calendar, you'll see that the oddball day got pushed to a Friday but we're still gonna have the same pattern and that'll be a B day. The week after that, it's Labor Day weekend. So there is no special Wednesday. We'll just do the A, B and you kind of get the pattern after that. Um, if it makes you feel any better for the level of confusion, after Labor Day, after the Labor Day week, Wednesdays line up for about four or five weeks in a row so we can get down a little bit of normalcy for whatever is normal nowadays, okay? All right, let's talk about attendance for a moment, please. Okay, attendance will be taken every class period. For the 10th grade and above, you guys last year were checking in using a Google form between eight and 10 o'clock, that's all gone. Just, just forget that right now, that's gone. Instead, you will check into every single class period. The teacher will take a moment, probably about a minute, and do a quick rundown of your names. So you're gonna need to have your camera and microphone working so that you could check in because the teacher must see you, not just hear you. So make arrangements to handle that. Now, in some of my, my public um, communications with you, I mentioned that phones are not an acceptable device for doing classwork and content work. That is true, and I still stick by that. That's going to come up later in this presentation, too. But if you can log in with your laptop and you prefer to use your camera as your sound and camera device, if you want to use your phone as your sound and camera device, that actually makes sense. But you have to be able to access the content on a laptop or a desktop or something else separately because you're not gonna be able to do it correctly otherwise. Phones simply aren't big enough to do this, okay? Um, now with attendance, you got three choices. You're either on time when attendance is taken, you're tardy, which means the teacher's gonna probably do a surprise check later in the period. If you pop up on that one, you're tardy. I don't care when you checked in, You've got to be there on time or you're going to be absent. That means you missed both check-ins, okay? So there's no grace period. 
You're in the class period before it starts. So if that's 8 o'clock, you're there before 8 o'clock. If it's eight uh, 9.15, before 9.15. If it's uh, 10.30, yeah, I'm reading it here. I haven't memorized the, the schedule yet. If it's 10.30, before 10.30. Please make that part of your normal daily operation that you're there before. Because if you miss the attendance, I don't want to hear the stories and neither does the teacher. That's your responsibility. Our job is to try to teach it to you. Your job is to please be there on time, okay? Now, we can't exactly have punishment for not doing this here, okay? And I don't like the idea of punishment anyway. But you should be graded on it there. If you do a good job of attendance, I want to give you 100% for that. If you do a pretty good job, you know what? I want you to get an A because you did a good job with an occasional, oh, yeah, you know, life happens. We get that. But if you're going to do a pattern of constantly being late to class, it's going to impact your grade. So on your report card, we're creating a special daily attendance grade. And it's going to be called that, daily attendance. Okay? So the information from the teachers, when they take this attendance, gets fed into a database. And from that database, Mr. Plantius will create grades for you that will go onto each report card. Please, let's not be late to class. Let's not miss classes. Now, there may be a reason for an absence, okay? Uh, you have a doctor's appointment. You won't be able to be in front of the computer. And we still have our attendance line. So please call into it there. I so wish I had double-checked that ahead of time, but I'm pretty sure the number is still 626-940-2002. Uh, Boy, I hope I was right with that one there. Um, so if you're going to be missing it, call in just like normal, and that's okay. Mr. Uh, Plantius will make note of that as an excused absence. Okay? All right. Dress code. Yes, even though we're in distance learning, there's still a dress code. Because you know what? If you don't organize yourself, prepare yourself for the classroom, you're not going to be mentally prepared to learn. And it's an important part of our daily disciplines. So, yes, there is a dress code. It'll be checked every class period, four times a day. That's one of the reasons why you must have a microphone. I'm sorry, not a microphone. Uh, a camera on. Because the teacher's going to take a quick glance. Uh, I've been doing this all week long in our faculty meetings just as we're talking about this to show how easy it is to do. And at a glance, I can see very, very quickly if a teacher has a T-shirt on, which most of them did this week, by the way, or whether they have a college shirt on. It's very, very simple to do. And that's all they're going to do. They're not going to give you, you know, a big, uh, you know, evaluation of how nicely dressed you are. Just real quick that that's there. But they're also going to be doing a check of your hair, too. And there'll be a separate grade for this one. I'll come back on that. The dress code minimum requirements is a collared Bosco Tech shirt. Now, that could be one of your uniform shirts. It could be a club shirt. It could be one of the athletic shirts. It could be uh, one of the service club groups. Any school-made shirt, not a homemade job, okay, but any one of our school shirts, official Bosco Tech shirts, that has a collar on it, one of the polo shirts. Uh, some of you guys have uh, button-down shirts also that have uh, collars on them. That's all good, as long as it has Bosco Tech on there someplace, okay? The second part is that your hair has to be neatly groomed, okay? We want you to look something like these guys here, okay? Where, you know, their hair is done nicely, they got the right shirts on, okay? Things like that. We don't want you to look like this guy here. Rolling out of bed, falling on the floor, and happening to land right in front of your laptop and starting class is not acceptable, okay? You should be at a table. You should have your laptop in front of you. Your material's next to you. You've had breakfast already. You're prepared to learn, okay? So make sure that it looks like it. Because if you look like this, the teacher's slipping going to tell you, um, you lose points today for dress code. Please make sure you're better by the next class period. Get that? Four periods. You messed up on the first one. Make sure it's fixed by the next one. But let's not see a pattern of always being poor for dress code in the morning. Get up a little bit earlier. Comb your hair. Brush your teeth. It's a school day. Make sure that you act like that. Okay? I'm going to back up one slide. So again, a reminder, there will be a separate report card grade for this also. That separate report card grade is going to be called uh, professional presence. And that's simply that you were ready to go for the day. Dressed, hair combed, groomed, let's go. <laughs> I love the picture, sorry. All right. I want to talk a little bit about computer access and internet access. Today's check-in form actually asked for some feedback on that. And over the next couple of days, we'll try to go through all your responses and see if there's anything that there is a critical need out there that we might be able to give some advice for, okay? First of all, for the computer, 
you need to have a laptop or desktop to work at. Now, if you have a very good uh, tablet, some of those large tablets that, well, it's actually like a laptop, but it folds around so you could type in everything. A large tablet is acceptable. I've seen students do a very good job of that, and that's fine. Phones are not. We're going to be showing imagery that there's not enough detail for that there. You're going to be having to do compositions, and it doesn't work very well. Not to mention when you're typing in the phone, what comes out of there is often in kind of a texting format there. That's fine when you're texting. It's not acceptable when you're doing college preparatory papers, okay? So please make sure that you've got that ready to go, that yours is put aside and ready, okay? Headphones and earbuds are a good idea. They could be helpful, especially if you're sharing the room with other people. You may have a parent who's working from home because they've been impacted by this also. Uh, you may have a, an older or younger sibling also. Uh, some of the kids, some of you may have older siblings who are starting college right now. And they're going to really be demanding that it stays quiet around the house. So if you can find your own corner and you can put on some uh, earbuds, you might be able to keep, you know, your class material to yourself and not be bugging them with it. Video conferencing requires really good access to the Internet. And we've already had experience in the spring that some of our houses are not as well connected as they could be. There are ways to improve the speed at your house. I want to talk about a few of those right now. The very first thing you need to do, though, is you need to test your internet speed. Um, if you've gone through Mr. Sepulveda's class, he probably taught you about this here. But there's a really simple uh, tool in Google called Internet Speed Test. To find it, you type in Internet Speed Test. It's really not that difficult. And it pops up in the Google browser. It's really easy. And you click Start. Uh, wh when it goes, uh, when it starts to... Um, to uh, to run, uh, what it does is it downloads a little bit of data to your computer, and then it re-uploads that same data from it there. It does not get control of your computer whatsoever. Don't worry about that. It's very, very safe. The one from Google has been tested over and over again. Anyways, you want to use that speed test, because for video conferencing, you really need to have an internet download speed at home, something in the range of about 30 megabytes per second or better. For uploads, at least about 10 You'll get away with it, okay? So something in that range there, higher would be better. Now, if you are, um, sorry, some people might be sending me messages. It's really bad timing for that there. Um, don't play with your phones, kids. There's some things you could do to actually improve your connections to this here. Now, at most of our houses, the way the internet gets into your house, and you know, there's a little cloud drawing on that there. The way it gets into your house is it goes with something called a modem. And that's either a cable line going in there or a uh, uh, digital, digital subscriber line. It's a phone line coming into there. And the modem basically unscrambles it so you have actually have access. That's basically how the, uh, the companies are controlling who gets the Internet and make sure they pay for it there. So if you have the Internet going to a modem, then going straight to your computer, that is the best connection because it's a hardwire connection. From your computer to your modem, You've got a cable. It might be, uh, Mr. Chua, change over for a second, please. Uh, you can go to the side camera. The, it, it might be a, a, a blue cable like this here. It doesn't have to be blue. It looks like a phone cable, but it's got extra connections. It's called a data cable, okay? Uh, blue is a common color. It's not the only one out there. The data cable sends whatever signal you've got, however strong it is, straight on in. A lot of you are set up to your house's Wi-Fi. And you know what? It's really convenient. It works pretty well. But any device you put between the modem and your computer slows down the message a little bit, okay? That device is called a router, okay? And it basically, like the name says, it's routing out the signal to different places there. Now, in the drawing you see there, you can see my little blue cables going directly to the computer and to whatever an NAS is. Those direct connections are going straight to the modem, unfiltered. But anything going through Wi-Fi has to be processed first. And the router processes that before it turns into a radio signal. So even if you've got one of these Wi-Fi units that says, yes, it could do up to 300 megabytes per second, that's great. But in processing, it still slows it down. So the suggestion that I have for you is this. Try to connect directly to the modem if you can. Using one of these data cables or something like that. They're not expensive. You can get them at Fry's very easily. You can get them over at uh, Walmart, other places, uh, uh, Best Buy, things like that. Uh, make sure you get one long enough. Don't get one too short, okay? And that direct connection will give you a much better signal coming in. 
Now, some of you may have your modems and your routers connected into one. Um, there's a box that I'm showing you that's an example of that. You got that from your cable company or from your phone company. You have no idea how good the Wi-Fi is inside of that. They're going to say, oh, it's great. I've tested this myself many times. I've gone through a lot of these over the last 15 years. And you know what? No, they're not that great. Sometimes the unit cannot handle multiple people logging on. And if you're still using a router that you've been using at your household for, say, five, six, seven years, it's not capable of handling some of the faster speeds that we're doing now. So what I suggest you do is take your device and using one of those data cables I mentioned, plug it directly into the back of this unit, directly into the router portion of this modem so that you're not using your Wi-Fi. Turn, your, turn the Wi-Fi off and just go with that. And now check your speeds. So I want you to check your upload and download speeds both directly using a data cable on a direct hardline connection and at a different time using your Wi-Fi and see if there's a difference. And if the difference is significant, you've got a problem that you need to improve on. Now, whether that's a new uh, Wi-Fi router whether it's contacting your cable company and saying, hey, what's up here? Whatever it is, I prefer you didn't come talking to us for some advice until you first do that basic test. What is your download and upload speeds, both hardwired and through the Wi-Fi? That tells us a lot as to how we can maybe give some advice to help you. Online etiquette is going to be very important there, okay? We cannot have a classroom of 25 students with everybody having the microphones turned on for obvious reasons. If we're using most of the online platforms, the video conferencing platforms, the camera's going to jump from person to person to person to person, and it just absolutely doesn't work. By muting your microphone, all of those platforms are sensitive to who's ever talking, okay? And so it jumps over to them right away. So what I want you to do is make sure that as soon as you come into a classroom, mute your microphones and leave it muted until the teacher says, okay, unmute microphones, we're going to be doing our uh, attendance, okay? And each class will work out a system for how you should unmute. For example, some teachers might want you to type the word hand into the chat box. In Zoom, there's a little button you can push for hand. Those are all terrific. And the teachers are being provided with monitors that are big enough that they can easily keep an eye on the students as they're raising hands and things like that so that we could serve you better with that, okay? But the teachers will talk about that one. Make sure you arrive early to each class to test your technology before the class begins. If you get there early and somebody's you know, chit-chatting away before uh, the starting time, it's up to the teacher, but I don't have a problem with that. But the moment the class period starts, this teacher says, okay, everybody quiet, please. Mute right away. That's online etiquette. You don't speak until you're recognized and you take your turn. There's no talking over each other. And you listen to the instructions from your teacher, okay? Remember also that your parents or siblings might be listening too. So be discreet and be courteous about them, okay? Uh, something happens in the class, it's funny, that's great, but don't suddenly jump up and scream or worry you're out there. A little self-control. Don't disrupt them from the work that they're doing too. So we're all going to have to be a little bit careful with this here. Okay, now organize your classes in Google Classroom. By this time, you should have found your Google Classroom. Did you find the little nine-dot shortcut? If you haven't found that yet, once you get into your Bosco Tech Google account, look in the upper right-hand corner. Uh, sorry, that'll be on this side. Look in the upper right-hand corner, and you're going to see those nine little dots there. Click on that. Scroll to the bottom. Your Google Classroom is waiting for you. And if you're inside of your Bosco Tech browser, which is logged into your Bosco Tech account, when you click on that, guaranteed it takes you to the Bosco Tech Classroom, not some other one you might have been in part of at some other school. So once you click there and you go to there, You'll get to your, to your Google Classroom. The teachers have added to the titles of the class the period of the class. So if you were supposed to be in ACE 111, now it says A1 slash B1 because it meets on both days, okay? Um, ACE 111. If it's sophomore English, and I'm not actually sure what the sophomore teachers call the sophomore English class, but let's say it used to say sophomore English, now it's going to say A3, sophomore English. Uh, the honors chemistry is B2. Uh, by the way, I'm not sure if honors chemistry is B2, so don't be upset with me if I got that wrong. But it's going to give the period and then the class name, okay? That's going to make it really easy for you to go to your Google Classroom and move the tiles around, okay? Google Classroom, this is not ours. I just stole this off the Internet. But you can grab those tiles and slide them around. You probably already figured that out. So organize them from A1 to A4, from B1 to B4. Make it really easy for you to go from room to room to room 
to find what you need to have. And our teachers are trying to participate in this to help you to make it more efficient as we go from classroom to classroom, okay? Your Google Meet links are found inside each classroom's Google Classroom account. So when you go to the one room and you click on it, the link is right there at the top. Now, some teachers may be providing a Zoom link. Um, I, I was one of those that was very much against Zoom when it first came out because as an administrator, all I heard about was Zoom bombing and you know the problems they had with that. Well, Zoom figured it out and they made a lot of changes and it's a really good tool to use. So some teachers will be using Google Meet, some will be using Zoom, they're both great, that's up to the teacher to decide. And they will work out a way to get you the Zoom Meet link, okay? Uh, I'm aware that there was some trouble embedding it inside of Google Classroom, and I'm not sure why. Um, so I'll leave it up to the teachers. Uh, please, if you're, never, if you're ever uncertain and you're supposed to be someplace, check your email real quick. Once the teacher figures it out, they already grouped all of their classrooms with uh, group emails. They will contact real quick to the class saying, hey, if you're having trouble logging on, and they'll give you instructions there, okay? I hope that you already have all your links for today. I had advised you to do that a couple of times over the last several days there. So you should be ready and have an intuitive sense as to where to find all your classes, because this afternoon, remember, 15 minutes, you haven't got much time to jump around there, okay? When you need to talk to your teachers, use the email. You can also use your Google Classroom stream, but please use the emails, communicate. And when you communicate, Please identify yourself in the subject line. You're sending an email to the teacher for, let's say, sophomore English. Why don't you write down sophomore English or English period A2? And then you can put something else in the subject line. So English period A2 colon, what was the assignment today? And then below you can write whatever message you want. Do it that way. Please be careful when you send messages from your phones because you often are sending them in a text format, even though you're in an email, and it comes across very awkward. Your entire message is into the title line of the email, and it's really sloppy. So let's start learning about that, and listen to feedback from your teachers, and let's be professional in our work there, okay? If you've got concerns about any of this, you're just getting a little bit confused, talk to the academic counselors. They've got most of the answers, and if they don't, they're gonna make note of it, and they're gonna bring it up to somebody else who can get the right answers. So please, if the teacher can't help you directly, go to your academic counselors next. Now, Mr. Chavez will talk with you in a little while about uh, which counselors to go to, remind you about things like that. I think you've already been introduced online with them there, but he'll, he'll add a little bit more to that in a little while there. Okay, the school is adopting a new SIS. That stands for Student Information System. And that's what all schools use to organize student, student uh, communications and grades and things like that. Um, it's also referred to as a learning management system or an LMS. That's actually a component within it. Uh, too much detail, we don't care. We're getting a new system. And it's gonna be through the same system that we've done billing to our families for actually years now. So this SIS is gonna be called Fax SIS. And what's nice about that is that if your parents want to check grades, when they log into the same account that they would use to check balances or you know whether or not a credit was given to their account or something like that, that same link will allow them to get over to your grades to take a look at how you're doing in class. And you'll have a similar login. Now, I, I'm going to tell you that we're slow. No, we're not slow. That's not fair. We had great plans on this to have it all set up and ready to go by August the 1st. And in the early part of this calendar year in January and February, um, and even a little bit into March, I gotta tell you, I, I was part of so many video conferences with the company who's setting us up on this so that we're all ready to go. And then COVID-19 hit. And uh, it, it's not an understatement to, to say that it changed everyone's daily work schedules dramatically. So we're not as far as we had hoped to be. I know that Mrs. Longori out of the business office has been sending out invitations to try to get logged on. I know we've had a few problems with some of those. Guys, we're gonna work this out. Don't worry about it. We're gonna get the details done. We're gonna get you set up with your accounts there. Give us a little bit more time to it there, okay? The plan is that by the first progress report, your progress report will be coming from Fax SIS. Now, we're no longer using Net Classroom. If you access it, you might see your classes, you might see your name in there. Because we did use the database that Net Classroom's attached to, we did use it to, to do our scheduling this year. 
but that's the last we're going to use of it. So um, shortly, it'll start to become inaccurate. And as a matter of fact, we'll probably turn off the view of it once we don't want you looking at it anymore. In the meantime, if you see something and it concerns you in the classroom, you could talk to your counselor about it. Okay, we're still using it as our organizing tool, but you won't see grades appearing in Net Classroom. Most of your grades are going to appear inside your Google Classroom for now, and then teachers will get those uh, transferred over into the, uh, the new um, student information system, or SAS, as quickly as we can get them trained onto it there. Okay, thank you for your patience with this process. Now with the new SAS, we have one significant upgrade. Beginning this year, Bosco Tech is going back to uh, awarding plus and minus grades for all classes. Now, we actually used to do this a long time ago, and we stopped for an extended period of time, and there was a variety of reasons. The primary reason is that your GPA really won't change that much um, with plus or minus grades. I've done the analysis myself many, many times over. So going off to college, it's not going to make a big difference. And there are many universities, when they're doing their calculations, they don't care about plus or minuses. It's the letter grade only. Well, because of that, a long time ago, we adopted it. But one of the negatives of that is that if you've been working hard in a class, let's say you're getting a B in the class, and you work a little extra hard, you're still going to get a B. Your friend, who's sloughing off a little bit there, he ends up getting a B too. Even though your grade might be approaching an 88, and his grade's approaching an 81, you all get the same grade. Beginning this year, that will change. And so you're going to get rewarded for that little bit of extra work there, okay? It'll actually show up as being a plus or minus grade. Now, um, on this scale here, you'll see that uh, an A-plus goes up to 115%. Um, that's simply the cutoff out of there. Um, I'm not sure why teachers go quite that high up there. It's just a number to be able to cover for those students who really excel over and beyond. Uh, by the way, students who do that really helps us out a lot when we're handing out awards. So I appreciate the hard work that you guys do for that there. But this is the breakdown that you see in front of you uh, as to the different grade scales. This will be, if it's not already sent home, sent home to you. Uh, almost everything I'm sharing today, by the way, will be available for you to review again. Now, if you're in an AP or an honors course, it's the same scale as you see here, except for jumping up one number. So if you're in AP uh, English, you're actually on a five-point scale. That's how people get GPAs above 4.0, okay? One warning, though, when you're in an AP or an honors course, you do get the GPA boost for everything except for Ds or lower. There's no GPA boost for that there. So whereas you'll get five points for an A and four points for a B and three points for a C, which is one point higher than you would normally get in a regular college prep course, once you get to a D, you jump down a lot, okay? So be careful about that. We expect students in AP and honors courses to be doing the work expected of them. Otherwise, ask to be transferred out immediately. Maybe that's not the best class for you, okay? Okay, let's ignore that one there. Oh, looks like I'm all done. So with that, this is a really good time since I've been talking about a whole bunch of things dealing with counseling, okay? I'm going to be turning over this presentation to uh, Mr. Chavez, who's gonna be sharing some more information with you there. Mr. Chavez? Okay, thank you, Mr. Krynan. Welcome, Bosco students. It's really nice to spend some time with you. Uh, I thank those of you who stayed in touch during the summer months and uh, during the spring semester uh, virtually. Um, uh, we miss all of you, though. You're, you're, we're, we can't wait till you're all able to return, and we're all able to return as our family uh, on campus. Uh, I want to welcome the freshmen. It was nice to speak with you and be a part of your freshman retreat uh, this past Friday. Uh, but welcome to Bosco Tech officially. Uh, as we discussed, this is your school, your new school, your church, your playground, and your home. And we hope you will feel those things sooner than later. So I'd just like to share a few things with you, okay, about counseling this year. Obviously things have changed and, uh, and there's a few pieces of information that you should be aware of. Number one, uh, 
There'll be two counselors this year. Um, Mr. Paul Ortiz, who's been a longtime counselor here at Bosco Tech. Uh, he will be handling the sophomores and the juniors. Uh, so any of you in those grades that have uh, issues or concerns or need some assistance, uh, please contact him at uh, initial P or T's at boscotech.edu. Uh, I will be handling the seniors again this year, uh, helping you with your college admissions process. Uh, I've already sent out some information through you to you during uh, the summer, but there's a whole lot more that we'll be dealing with in the next couple of weeks. Uh, I will also be uh, handling the freshmen this year. So those of you, uh, we know you're new. We know there's a lot of direction that you may may want from us and or require from us and I will certainly be doing uh, my best to help you along the way. <clears throat> uh, both Mr. Ortiz and I will be uh, conducting a lot of business using Google Meet and Zoom uh, for live interaction. We want to have live interaction as much as possible and those are the two forms of medium that we'll probably be using the most. There's a few others that we may use, especially when it comes to uh, larger group meetings, meetings that involve parents, for instance, uh, or just groups of students. Uh, I personally plan to, to work with uh, groups of seniors, and in those instances, I may use another form of uh, communication, but nonetheless, we'll be using Google Meet and Zoom primarily. And as always, if you need to communicate with us, if you need to know something right away or need our assistance right away, please continue to use the regular email. Uh, you know, contact us that way with your questions. And I know Mr. Ortiz is very good at getting back to students uh, uh, quickly, and and I do my best to get back uh, by within the same day. So please uh, continue using that form of uh, contacting us. There's a few changes this year. Uh, Mr. Krinan just explained the plus and minus grading system. Uh, please be aware of that, and those of you who like to really achieve at the highest levels. Uh, this is going to be a great opportunity for you to uh, enhance your grade. Um, so I I encourage you to to work hard and, and to finish at the top end of whatever grade you're going to get so that you may get that plus added to uh, your grade, your letter grade. A big change this year will be uh, for the services that we provide regarding uh, personal counseling. Uh, in years past, we used a organization called Outreach Concern to provide these services. Uh, this year, we have changed to uh, the Counseling Partners of Los Angeles, one of the leaders in providing uh, personal counseling services to schools uh, in the Los Angeles area. We're really excited about having them. Uh, we are expanding our services to be available five days a week as opposed to four days a week last year. Uh, I have spoken to CPLA representatives uh, during the summer uh, and they have informed me that they in, they plan to use Google Meet and Zoom as well uh, for their live communication with students. So if you 
uh, have or feel you need to speak to one of these counselors or have them contact you, please make contact with me or with Mr. Ortiz and we can arrange that for you as quickly as possible. Uh, just like the Outreach Concern uh, Organization, uh, CPLA does uh, require a, a signed uh, permission from your, your parent and uh, we can help you with that to get that. Last, I want to I want to speak a little bit about uh, your daily routine. I know Mr. Krynan touched upon this, but I, I wanted to get maybe a little a little more into it. You know, when we were on campus, uh, everyone has a daily routine: getting up each morning and and getting prepared to come to school, and then actually coming to school. All that has changed, but in reality, recent studies have shown that the more you can stick to the routine you had before, obviously you can't come on campus right now, but the routine you had in the morning, waking up, uh, having breakfast, uh, brushing your teeth, combing your hair, getting dressed for school, the same routine that you had prior to online uh, education is a good way to continue. It keeps you uh, going and being familiar with what you've done uh, all along. So try to get into that or stay into that routine. Don't try not to get lazy and say, well, I'm not going to comb my hair today or you know what? Um, I'm not going to be interacting in person with anybody. So I don't need to brush my teeth. Don't try not to do that. All right. Get, 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 stay professional. Be well groomed. Get dressed like you were going to be on campus. You're going to be on camera. You're going to be communicating with teachers and, and your fellow classmates in some instances. Be ready for each class. Okay. Uh, it's been studied already and already proving that that's going to help you to do better and be at your best for each class that you have. Um, now, I want to talk about a little bit about uh, class schedule changes. Both Mr. Ortiz and I have been um, bombarded with a lot of requests for class changes or consideration of class changes. And we've made a lot of them that we could for some of you. Uh, we will continue during the next week or so to look at requests that come our way, or in some cases, there were some uh, little mishaps, if you will. Students were maybe placed in a, a class that uh, they had already taken and or, or that they had requested another class and they weren't placed in that class, things like that. Uh, we will continue to deal with those. Please be patient though, because most of the requests Ms. Ortiz and I get at this time of year are top priority. And so when you get, you know, 25, 30 requests and they're all top priority, you gotta just pick at them one at a time and get them done as quickly as you can. So please be patient with us. We're going to be dealing with all of you, and hopefully by the end of the week, uh, we will have resolved all the class scheduling issues. Okay, but by all means, uh, send us your emails and, and make us aware of any concerns you have at any time, okay? Um, 
And with that, I'm going to let you go. I know you've you've already received a lot of information, and uh, and we're going to have more information for you on the breakout sessions, and you'll be able to ask a few questions during the breakout sessions that are uh, forthcoming in a in a few minutes. But with that, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce to you someone who's new to our team, but really not new to Bosco Tech. Uh, we're glad to have him as a member of our team. He's our new athletic director of Mr. Vincent Velasco. Okay, so Vincent, it's all yours. Thank you very much, Mr. Chavez. Good morning, Bosco Tech. My name is Mr. Velasco. I'm the new athletic director here. I'm very excited to be here, and I can't wait to get started. Uh, previously, when I was a student here, I was in the construction technology back in 2009. In addition, I was a former student athlete here. I participated on the football and baseball team. Now, the image that you see here right in front of you was a very important image to me when I was a student athlete here. This was my junior year here at Bosco Tech. And just a little bit of background on that particular game. It was a big rivalry game between Cantwell High School, right next door in Montebello. And entering that game, uh, both of us, we were uh, had very good records. We were 4-0 entering that game, and Cantwell was 4-1. It was a big deal. Uh, the Winter Daily News, the newspaper, actually uh, wrote a, a, a pregame story about this game, and they were going to be at the game as well. So it was a lot, lot of pressure from us because we were the road team, and I believe it was their homecoming game. And um, a little side story is, I remember when coming out for our pregame warmups, for the visiting locker, it's underneath the home stand, so you have to come out and walk, kind of like a walkway, and then you make a quick right, another walkway, and then there is the football stadium and the field. So while we were walking out for, I played uh, strong safety, when I was walking out with the defensive group for our warmups, uh, a few of the Cantwell fans actually threw some water and popcorn on us while we were coming out. But nonetheless, uh, we were excited, we were ready for the challenge. So the first couple of minutes of the game, uh, it was definitely a struggle. Uh, we were down 21-0. Our special teams, uh, for some reason, they just couldn't hold on the football properly. Uh, they fumbled within our own end zone, so it was really hard for us defensively to try to make a stop. But nonetheless, uh, we decided after 21-0 that, hey, we need to get a stop, and let's just start to work together as, as a team, which was very, very important. And uh, we continued to believe in ourselves, and we never quit, which was very, very important. Uh, to us. Now, fast forward to the end of the story. Uh, from that moment on, we scored an unanswered 35 points to secure uh, the, the victory against Cantwell High School. And then last five minutes of the game, I secured the victory with the interception to seal the deal for us. So it was a very, very exciting moment for us, a big rivalry game, and to come back 35-0 which was very, very important to us to win the game. We just wanted to win the game. We didn't care what the score was, but uh, to come back in that fashion was just very, very nice. And it uh, really helped us to get us prepared for a league uh, season. Now, the next slide that you see is another very important uh, picture uh, to me. I was lucky and I was very blessed and fortunate to participate in NCAA athletics. I played Division II college football at a very small university in uh, New Mexico. Actually, it's located in the first Las Vegas, so there's, there's actually two Las Vegas cities in, in America, I think in the world. But uh, nonetheless, this one is the first one, and uh, I just work really hard. I work really hard in, in my academics and in, and in the football field. I made sure that I was following all the requirements for NSA Clearinghouse. Then I did my absolute best for to prepare myself for the next level. And that was very, very important uh, to me that I put the hard work in, I never doubt myself, I never quit. And during this past eight years, I have worked in various levels 
in athletics. I was fortunate enough my time during my time at New Mexico Highlands that I started to work in their athletic department. And then from there, uh, I worked a year and a half at Salesian High School. I was the assistant athletic director, also worked in finance. I did some substitute teaching and also taught their online health courses for about um, three summers. And after Salesian High School, I became the PE health teacher and I, was, and I was also the athletic director at St. Vincent's School in Los Angeles. It's uh, right next to Mount St. Mary's. And I had a great three years there. I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about my students. And it was just a lot, a lot of great times, times I would cherish. And then just recently, last school year, uh, I made a big jump. I moved out to the East Coast in Delaware. I became a athletic director at uh, Christ the Teacher Catholic School in Delaware. That was a fantastic uh, opportunity for myself to learn more about me and also to grow in my professional development in athletics. It was something I couldn't pass up. And I was very fortunate enough to be part of that very special school community. And now I am here to be uh, the new athletic director here at Bosco Tech. And once again, I'm very excited to to be your athletic director and just know that you're gonna get uh, my every single day. Okay, so now on to very important information regarding uh, updates from CIF for this academic school year. Now, a big decision was made by CIF a month ago on Monday, July uh, 20th. And essentially what CIF did was Instead of having a traditional three sports season, a fall, winter, spring season, uh, they just combine uh, the traditional winter sports season and uh, they kind of added some sports in the winter time into the fall, fall season. And they also added some of the traditional winter sports season into the spring season. So for this school year, uh, we, we will have two uh, seasons uh, due to CIF's uh, new, new announcement, the fall, and the spring seasons. So uh, those big changes uh, were announced last month. And for us, our new fall sports are going to be traditionally football is the same in the fall, cross country, and then now volleyball traditionally in the spring now was moved up into the fall. So that's the only change from a spring sport going into the fall season. So our fall season is football, cross country, and volleyball. And the season will start in the middle of December and it will end in early March. So we have that time frame for the fall sports. Now, moving on into the spring sports, okay, the last season of the, of the school year, the second season, okay. So we, we had three sports in the fall, fo uh, football, cross country, and volleyball. Now for our remaining six uh, sports for the spring, which include basketball, soccer, baseball, golf, tennis, and track and field. Now, the spring season is going to start around, okay, towards the end of February. And the spring season is going to end in, in June. So there's gonna be some overlap with the start of the spring season where it meets the end of the fall season. That's the only overlap that these two uh, sports seasons are going to have. And it's okay. Uh, I'm gonna do uh, my best every single day to just give reminders, especially once we give, once we get to that point in time, just to give everybody more clarity and just more notifications about that. And then our club team, okay, our club sport on campus, lacrosse, okay, that's still going to be right now in the spring season. Uh, once I get any new information, I will inform the entire school community about that. But for right now, for the time being, uh, Club Lacrosse is going to start in the spring season. And once I have more information, I will announce that, I will announce that at a later date to the entire school community. All right, so now we have football cross country training sessions for this fall. Now football just ended their conditioning sessions, excuse me, their conditioning training sessions for the summer this past week. All right, they had six weeks. It was kind of a hybrid. They were uh, doing, uh, conducting Zoom workouts at home two days a week, and then they were also uh, here on campus for one day. It was, it was on Wednesdays for a condition training uh, session. 
So now they're going to be taking a two week break, excuse me, two week break to recover and rest. And then they will start on, okay, for uh, training for the fall on, on the week of August 31st. More information will be announced very shortly. So uh, all students, uh, please check your emails from either myself or from uh, Coach Curtis. Now, if you are interested in joining football, we highly encourage you uh, to think about that. And if you want to participate, then uh, we gladly accept for all of you to participate. So if you, if you did get a chance to sign up in uh, for the summer conditioning, summer conditioning sessions, that's OK. Uh, if you want to sign up, please email myself, and I'll be more than happy to give you all the necessary information regarding uh, for the sign-ups for the fall football. Now, moving to cost country, all right, cost country will start their conditioning training sessions uh, next Monday, August 24th. So if you're interested in joining cost country, all right, uh, please email myself so I can give you all the necessary information regarding uh, sign us for the cost country team. So uh, please look out for emails from myself about the cost country information. Sorry, uh, one last thing. Uh, for volleyball for the fall right now, they're not going to have any conditioning training sessions. Uh, in the upcoming weeks, I was speaking to uh, Coach Reyes, and it worked, uh, he's discussing with me about training sessions in, in uh, October. So I'll be emailing you information regarding about volleyball in a few weeks. Okay, so on this new slide, it's a very important uh, subject area uh, to me. I was very fortunate uh, last school year when I was at Christ the Teacher uh, Catholic School that I was able to teach uh, a sports marketing class to, uh, to the junior high, to 6th, 7th, and 8th graders. And it was a fantastic, fantastic experience. It's actually been a class I've been wanting to teach for the longest, and it was a very positive experience, and students really enjoyed it, and I'm going to miss that. However, I'm going to be starting a sports marketing club here at the school, so I'm very excited uh, for that. Now, for the, for the time being, the sports marketing club is going to be offered to juniors and seniors at this time. So more information will be announced in the coming weeks, so students, please check uh, your emails, and I highly encourage uh, the juniors and seniors. If you're interested, if you're not too sure what sports marketing is, okay, uh, so send me an email and then uh, so, we, so you could join uh, the first information session about that. Now, just to give you a little information of what is sports marketing, it is defined as all the activities, all right? It's a lot of activities. So it's a very big umbrella where it falls into. So it's all the activities designed to meet the needs and wants of the sports consumers through the, ex through the exchange process. All right, so that's just a little tease, but I'll explain more into detail at our first uh, information session for a sports marketing club. And once again, I'm very excited uh, to start that, start that club here at Bosco Tech. Okay, so our next slide for athletic participation. All right, I highly encourage all of you, if uh, you're interested in participating uh, in a sport, or maybe a new sport, maybe a new sport that uh, you have participated before in the past and uh, you gave it a try, but you want to give it a, a second attempt, I highly encourage all of you uh, to do so. Athletics is a very important role in the oratory model, in the playground aspect in the, in the oratory model. So it's very, very important for all of you uh, if you're interested to join athletics. And if you are, please let me know and I will form you all the necessary information regarding that sport or sports if you want to be a multi-sport um, athlete. I highly encourage you uh, to do so. And if you have any questions with anything with athletics or sports marketing for that club, please e please email me. And my email address is uh, all lowercase uh, vnalosco at boscotech.edu. Once again, my email address is all lowercase vnalosco at boscotech.edu. So please email me if you have any questions regarding athletics or the sports marketing club. And lastly, okay, I look forward to meeting all of you and I can't wait for of our two sports seasons for this school year. Once again, 
My name is Mr. Nolasco. I'm the new athletic director here at Bosco Tech. I'm really honored and thrilled to be in this position, and I can't wait to meet all of you. And lastly, uh, go Tigers. Now, at this moment, I'm going to introduce myself. Excuse me. I'm going to introduce uh, Mr. Herrera again. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Nolasco, and welcome aboard, man. Uh, it's good to have you. Listen, I wanted to uh, address just some issues that uh, I've been receiving emails on Christian service. And I want to let you know that right now the Christian service program is still suspended because of COVID. And if something changes and the situation improves and we feel it's safe for you to go and do service at different places, we'll let you know. But for right now, it's still suspended. If you have old hours from pre-COVID that you're still hanging on to, go ahead and email them to me, and then I'll, I'll work with you on a case-by-case -case basis to make sure those hours get logged in and you don't lose them. I just recently had a student log in 300 and I think 50 hours a couple of days ago. Uh, he'd been holding on to them, and it was great that he got them in. So if there's any old hours, send me an email, and I'll work with you. Uh, on an individual basis to get those logged in for you. But don't worry about doing any new hours. Don't worry about the graduation requirement. Right now, everything is suspended uh, until it's safe to go out. Having said this, um, let me jump just real quick as an aside. Some of your clubs, whether you're um, National Honor Society, uh, Hispanic Honor Society, I know sometimes you guys do service, or, or no, you do service, um, if I could just ask the adult moderators to please coordinate with me if you're planning some kind of a service event, something maybe similar to the uh, retreat um, event that happened in the summer. But I, I need to know about those. Uh, so faculty, staff moderators, please tell me prior, give me some advance notice and let's talk about it. And uh, Let's see if we can plan out something safely for, for that if uh, it's the right situation and you will be there to help facilitate and moderate that event. Let me jump back to, to youth ministry real quick. We need help getting involved. Um, we've proven that we can put on online retreats. We did a, a small retreat for our faculty. We recently did a a small retreat for all our freshmen. Uh, we had about almost 90 students participate there. Seniors, I know you need service hours for your college uh, transcripts. This is one way to do it. I'd like to give priority to the seniors and give them uh, first refusal. If you don't want to do it, that's fine, but offer it to the senior classes first. All I ask is that if you sign up and you're accepted for one of these retreats or worship services, um, take it seriously. We have we have a, a lot of lives to affect, and it's just not about ours. Uh, I need real committed people to, to work with me, but I'm going to be offering it first to the seniors. Uh, that way they can log in some service hours for their college apps. We had a prayer service this morning run by our core team, and I want everybody to know we have about four spots available. You could be a sophomore, junior, or senior uh, at the moment. Uh, if you're interested, please shoot me an email and uh, I'll get back to you. Let me move on to ASB. I'll be the director of activities uh, this coming year. Uh, and we need to have elections soon. Uh, we're going to start off with a clean slate. I'd like to have elections September the 14th. We'll have speeches prior to that. And before all that happens, I need you guys to email me if you're interested in either a student council position, uh, president of the school, vice president of the school, secretary for the school, or treasurer for the entire school. But I also am looking for class presidents, class vice presidents, and class secretaries. If you're interested in running, please send me an email no later than Monday and let me know uh, what you're interested in doing and why. And uh, again, I'll work with you on an individual basis and then we'll get a ballot going. 
The elections are going to be through Google Classroom. One student, one vote. Everyone will get a chance to vote. I think that's really important that everybody has a chance and expresses their uh, opinion and their vote. Letterman, I know you are ready to vote in your leadership. I'm going to be uh, talking to you guys offline, and we can do our voting uh, through our own social media, and that's okay with me. And we'll talk about your moderator for the coming year as well. Lastly, in terms of clubs, our biggest challenge is to move online. That way we can keep our clubs going, whether it's a fun club or whether it's a more established club. Um, I'm looking to see how we can move things online. I would like to have a meeting with all the club presidents and moderators. If you guys could uh, send me an email, let me know if your club is still active for this coming year. And then we'll get a Google Meets with everybody and get ourselves coordinated. We already have two new clubs that have, that have come up. Other than the Sports Marketing Club with Mr. Nolasco, we also have the Keat Club uh, with Brenton Dunn, who's, who's heading it. And that's returning back on campus to Bosco Tech. So new clubs are possible. Uh, it's just a matter of trying to figure out how we're going to just move this all online like we have with some of the ministry things. If I can be of any more help to you or assistance or answer any questions, shoot me an email. God bless. Thank you very much. Let me shoot it over to Mr. Krynan. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Herrera. Appreciate that. So the question is now is what's next for today, okay? We're gonna be having our breakout sessions. Uh, Mr. Chua, could you make sure you're on the, the slide for a moment, please? Next are our breakout sessions. Um, you need to go to your email in a few moments and you should see an email that went out that has these four separate links. Uh, don't click on them right now, it's too early, but just find the one that's appropriate for your grade level and I'm going to give you the exact time as soon as I finish talking, but it's going to be right about 11 o'clock. At that time, about a minute or two before, you click on in and get yourself into your session. Now, these are Google Meet sessions. So as soon as you get in, turn your microphones off. You can use the chat room to ask questions. Now, I'm not sure if the moderators have a second person to watch their chats. So if you feel like no one's answering your the, the chat questions, sorry. Uh, in which case then you might want to just write the word HAND all in capitals, maybe with an exclamation mark, and hopefully the moderators will watch for that um, and you know be paying attention as they go along. Let them talk first. They will have a question and answer session near the end, okay? So again, those sessions, you know, I'm going to call it right now. Those sessions will begin at 11 o'clock. All right, then after that is we're going to be walking through your schedule. Like I mentioned earlier, we saw this already uh, before. And this is uh, those 10-minute passing uh, class periods with the five-minute passing period. Please be there on time. So make sure you've got your Google Classroom organized so you can jump from room to room as needed. Be ready to verbally check in, visually check in, and such for these. Nothing difficult is going to be given to you today, but it's important that we know you can get to all of your rooms. Okay? All right. <clears throat> so we're just about done. It's been a long morning, and I want to thank you for your attention to this here. You guys have done terrific. I've been getting pictures sent to me from your homes, and uh, if there's any parents who are watching right now, if you want to take a picture of your son very carefully working at a station, monitoring the broadcast, uh, it's terrific. We'd appreciate those. We love sharing on social media. We're living through some truly historical and extraordinary times. You're going to look back on this, and you're going to know that, that you survived, that you were there when it happened, and that you suffered losses. You're going to know that you were tested, and that you were made stronger because of the times that we are in. The COVID-19 pandemic will be a part of your history forever. But we will not let it define us. We will not let it hold us back. We will not let it stop us. We will continue to be who we are. Who are we? We are Bosco Tech. 
Gentlemen, we are all very excited about the upcoming school year and everything that has in store for you and for your families. Together, we're going to make this a wonderful year. God bless. Thank you for your time. We'll see you in the classrooms. Have a great day, Bosco Tech.